Today we have got kind of a short story for you today, but it is an important one. It comes from the book of Genesis, chapters 21 and 22. And this concerns Abraham and what happens following the promise that God gave him. Okay, here's the scene is Abraham was 99 years old. Sarah was 89 years old, and God had told them, okay, when I come back in a year, um, you'll have a baby. And Sarah had laughed about that, but it turned out that's exactly what happened. And the joke was on them, and it was a little boy, just as they'd been told, and they ended up naming him Isaac, which actually means he laughs, so or laughter, something along those lines. So it turned out that you could say the joke was on them, but really they were as pleased as they could be. This was the son that God had promised, and it had been the son God had promised a long time before. And even though Abraham had uh, another son named Ishmael, who was, of course, older, um, Ishmael was not going to be the son of the promise that God had given. Well, that may have caused a few issues because about the time um, Isaac was two or three, there was a big party about, um, well, for Isaac. And Ishmael was making fun of Isaac. Well, you may remember that Sarah already didn't care much for Ishmael or his mother Hagar and she went back to Abraham and said you got to get this Egyptian out of here because Hagar was from Egypt and Abraham was not wanting to do this um, but he talked to God about it and God said okay do do as Sarah asked now this time though uh, Abraham provides food and water. You may remember before it had just been Hagar by herself when she was expecting Ishmael and she'd gone with pretty much nothing. Well, he provides some provisions and they go off. They run out of water and they're, they're in terrible need. But God goes to her and says, don't worry about it. Um, your son is going to become a great nation. And there are a group of people, a huge group of people to this day who say they are descended from Ishmael. And it seems that what God told her was true. Are we surprised by that? No. But it's kind of nice to be reminded of these things. And eventually, Hagar works her way down to Egypt and finds uh, a wife for Ishmael and then be he begins having children and children and more children and so forth. Okay, that's sort of the end of the story with him. God goes to Abraham many years later and we're, we're thinking that by this time Isaac is a teenager. and. Things have been going well. Uh, Isaac is the heir to Abraham's fortune, meaning that when Abraham dies, Isaac gets everything. He becomes in charge of all of the servants and the animals and everything else. And it all looks good. And that's all the way up until the point where God goes to talk to Abraham. And he says, OK, Abraham, here's what I want you to do. I want you to go to Mount Moriah. Uh, take Isaac, your only son, whom you love, and you sacrifice him as a burnt offering to me. Okay. There's a whole lot of bad stuff in all of that, at least as far as Abraham's concerned. Okay, one, here's Isaac, your only son, okay, and you love him. Okay, so far that's pretty good right there. Take him to Mount Moriah, okay, not a problem sacrifice him. Suddenly things got real bad. And it's not just a sacrifice, it's a burnt offering. 
And what that means is you kill him and you burn him up completely. All right, that's not something Abraham wants to hear. And you understand that. But the next morning, he's up early. He has a couple of servants. They gather the firewood. They load it onto a donkey. And Abraham, Isaac, and the two servants head off toward Mount Moriah. It takes a couple of days of, of traveling because it's about 45 miles away. And that last day, the third day, um, Abraham says to the servants, okay, you wait here and we'll come back to you. Hmm. It's kind of interesting because he's supposed to go and sacrifice Isaac. So how is it that Isaac's going to come back after he does this and burns him up? Hmm. And people argue about that, but they're the people who don't know the whole story. So they take the firewood. Isaac carries that. Abraham has the knife for the sacrifice. He also has the fire. <clears throat> and that's one thing that's easy for us to forget is that they didn't have matches or ways to start fire that were easy, easy to do. So uh, when they were able to get a fire going, then they'd want to keep a fire at all times and carry the hot coals and a part that's burning with them when they go to the next place. And then they're able to start the new fire from that a whole lot easier. So he's carrying the fire and the knife and they head on. Well, Isaac, pretty sharp guy. He's looking, okay, we've got wood, we've got the knife, we've got the fire. Where is the lamb? Hmm, that seems to be missing. We kind of need a lamb for this. And so he asks his dad, okay, where's, where's the lamb? And his dad says something odd to him. Oh, the Lord will provide. Hmm. Well, okay, well, dad is a prophet. And that we had found out earlier in the, in the Bible itself, it said, uh, God says to somebody else that, oh, Abraham's a prophet. So he carries a lot more um, influence, we could say, or communication with God than your average person. Well, they head on up to Mount Moriah. They get there. Uh, Abraham sets up an altar. He lays out the wood, and then he ties up Isaac. By this time, Isaac had to have figured out what was going on. Okay, God's providing, but I'm the one being provided. Okay, Abraham gets the knife. He's about ready to kill the son he loves. Then an angel shows up. It's Abraham, Abraham. Gets his attention. He said, don't kill the boy. He said, and the angel is speaking for God. He says, now I see that you will not withhold from me your son. See, this has been a test for Abraham. Now, did God know what he would do? Yes. But remember in these things where God is looking to see something for himself, there's the benefit of a person there to be able to see for himself, oh, so this is what God was doing. And that could be really important in some of these lessons. Now, we generally don't have that benefit now. Uh, it, it would be rare to hear someone saying, oh yeah, God talked to me and told me this. Pretty much we can look on things later and say, oh, this happened, so this could happen. And that's the that's the way our minds work on this. This time, God is more directly involved. And he points out that there is a ram, meaning a boy lamb, caught in the bristles, has his horns caught up in, in this vegetation and can't get away. Well, that becomes the lamb that they do sacrifice on the altar. So Isaac is spared and they're able to do the burnt offering and then they head back. And they're, they're 
many little lessons, or you could say there's a big lesson with lots of little things to think about in this, is that Abraham is told to sacrifice the most important thing to him. He's the father of the faith. He's the one that people will look to in years to come and say, let's do things the way Abraham did them. Abraham was not a perfect person, but when it came to God, he would do exactly what God told him to do. And that's a big lesson for us, is that when God has something for us to do, we may make mistakes, we may mess up. Sometimes we may do things that are wrong and we know we're doing them wrong. But each time we turn back to God, we are saying, okay, what God wants is the most important. And it's important for us to always make that turn back toward God. Well, with this, Isaac learns this lesson too, uh, kind of with mixed emotions, I'm sure, because he saw what his father was going to do, yet he's able to learn from that. It's like, okay, you don't fool around with God. Uh, he means business, and you do what he says, and you follow him. Now, we find out later on in the New Testament, the book of Hebrews, chapter 11, that Abraham thought that God could and would bring Isaac back from the dead. And that's important because had he been a burnt offering, there wouldn't have been anything left from his body. And yet Abraham believed God could do it. So important lesson for us to remember is that there are things that we'll look at and we'll go, this is impossible. But we forget God is not tied up by the same things that stop us. God is able to do things much bigger than we can even imagine. Okay, with that, I'm going to let you go. We'll show you my tie. Today we have this tie to show someone traveling. Now, uh, Isaac would have had darker hair and darker skin, but, and he would have been older than this, but he would have been carrying the firewood with him and maybe something similar to this. But the tie is really just to remember that, okay, Isaac was part of this. and He went along willingly. He did not fight back or try to prevent things when he saw he was about to be sacrificed. All right. I hope you've enjoyed today's lesson. And even more so, I hope you'll be back next time. Bye.